Um, <clears throat> right. Now, I uh, have, uh, I think people have may have got these uh, six examples of wordplay in Arabic that I sent around. I don't know if anyone wants to, uh, to, to, to try. I mean, uh, we should, we, we probably, impo imp we not, will not be able to do all the things because they're too difficult and too many, but we could take uh, an example. Is, is there anyone who would volunteer uh, with, say, to start with a literal translation of one of these? Can anyone see the, <coughs> the number two, the Tauria by al Hamil Kaukabani? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, um, I have given the one Arabic line, and it's actually from a, from a late collection, 18th century, but, uh, and it's, uh, it's about, uh, well, it's from a Ghazal, a love poetry. And um, I have given the transliteration, and there are no verbal puns, but it's, uh, I mean, no, so no sound puns, but it's about um, technical terms again. Uh, is there anyone who would like to volunteer a, a, trans, a literal translation? Uh, let me see. I have. So no. we have uh, we have Arabs and Arabic speakers here. Yeah. I can um, call on them. Yeah. So Orhan is one. Sorry, Orhan. Orhan. Eileen is another. Um, and then there's Manhel, Samia, uh, and there is. Uh, Sarah, no, Sarah, Eileen, Manhel, Khaled, Al Harbi, Ghazi, Ghazi Al Harbi. Uh, I see a hand. Yajur, Yajur, Binun, is Sudi Kalbi, Lil Asa, Wama Kultu, and Nanuna min Ahrufil Jerry. Yajur, Binuni, um, Binun is Binun is Sudi. قلبي للأسى وما خلت أن النون من أحرف الجري. So what's he saying in English? Oh, okay. Najuru, he just he drags, he pulls. Yeah. And what is نون الصدغ? Sodr is the key word here, in, in a sense. Sodr is the, the side lock, the curl, the curls. Uh, have. It's about a beautiful boy, no doubt, because most beloved, uh, most of the beloved persons in, in Ghazal are male in Arabic. Oh, uh, so but what's the noon here? It's the letter N, mm. the letter N of his side lock. So they're shaped like the letter N, curved. And he draw, draws, he pulls my heart to grief, Lil Asa. Mm -hmm. And then the pun part is in the next bit, or the yeah, joke, if I you think. like. Okay. I mean, Literally, I did not know that the noon, the letter N, is, is one of the letters of Jar, of Puri. Okay. But what is Jar as a technical term? A proposition. Sorry? A proposition. Yeah, yes, it's well, jar is really what we call the genitive in English. Uh, so the, 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 the case ending that you would have after prepositions, and many prepositions in Arabic are single letters like ka and b and li. So what he says, what the poet says, he draws my heart to grief with the noon, the letter u, noon of his uh, side lock. And I never knew, I never imagined that the noon would be one of the letters that would pull. Uh, uh, so pull my heart, um, but one of the letters that go with the genitive. Impossible to translate unless, as I've done, you translate this with a, you replace the pun with an English pun. Now, uh, I, if, if someone has found an answer to this, uh, let, let him or she let her speak before I give mine. Because I thought, well, in English, you, you need a letter in English, of course. Which letters in English are curved and also given possibility and the potential for, for punning. I mentioned it already in my initial talk, the letter C. Mm -hmm. So um, I made a translation, I'll read it, I can also project it later on the screen. With C-shaped curls, he drowns my heart in misery. I had not thought that one could drown in such a C. To drown in a C, you made it a, it's, an or, it's an oral pun. And of course, uh, um, 
I have the um, I had to add drown because in the sea you drown it. There's not nothing but pulling. So I mean, to make it coherent, I said he drowns my heart in misery. And I had not thought that one could drown in such a sea. I actually made it rhyme as well. Uh, although of course the, the Arabic original did not does not rhyme on its own. So this is an example of uh, to translate by replacing one pun by another. It's not always possible, but I've selected a few where I at least thought it was possible. So shall we take another example? Um, uh, well, <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, can we uh, look at number three, which is start with Qad Zahal Mimbaru Ujban Mustaraqayta Khatiba? Can you see that? Mm. It's um, uh, we are the probably you can't see the uh, the poet was 12th century Ibn Paisarani, and it's in praise of a preacher. Now, a preacher, a khatib in Arabic, he does this from a pulpit called the mimbar. I hope, and uh, you could also say mimbar probably in English dictionaries. So he says, uh, in praise of this, uh, this, this preacher, and especially if you look at the Arabic script, you see that in the last line you have this dhamma khatiba and dhamma khatiba look almost the same, apart from the fact that the word divisions is different. Um, would anyone like to volunteer the meaning, the literal meaning, before we try to, to translate it uh, into uh, uh, well, maybe with another yeah, Orhan, Orhan wants to try it. it. Okay, I can try it. So, al minbar wa um, should mean something like um, the member. The uh, the member has uh, become a very wondrous ever since. But you, yeah, Archibald, it's, not, it's not a hajj, it's a hajj, it's, it's pride. Uh, more in liking is more likable. No, it means he's he's proud. It's something the pulpit is glowing with with pride. Zaha okay. he, he glows with pride. The member being personified. Mustaraqayta khatiba. He's addressing this. Since you became uh, the pre, since you became the preacher. Oh, taraka really means. Since you've been promoted to ascend, to go up, to taraka is to, to climb up. Okay. To, since you, because a pulpit a member can be got a few steps. So the uh, the pulpit glowed with pride, pride since you, uh, as a preacher, uh, ascended it. Yeah. And then he says, "Atura bomma khatiba." Now, this is, of course, a very is the funny compound part. paranomasia, I would call it. Um, I thought I, I means, I wonder, eh? I, really, what do you think? Has the pulpit enveloped a preacher? Or, um, or, has, it or been, has, it, has it been? Or has it become a. Uh, nicer. To, to daub, to, to smear, to sprite with, with tree, which is perfume, scent. So he says, literally, um, uh, it's, it's, of course, it's the idea that uh, a good person has a good scent, you know, a, a perfume is, is also a good reputation. So did it, it's called uh, feigned uh, ignorance, uh, in Arabic rhetoric. And he says, is it really uh, that, that there is a preacher on the, on the, the member or has the, the member being... Uh, well, is it wafting with a kind of perfume? And, um, well, I don't know if anyone has an idea of how to translate it into proper literary English, but I thought that ascending Formally. and... Sorry? For, uh, even the form of it. Well, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, it's, it's called exercises, but uh, you should really have... Uh, it's called this weeks in advance, and I thought about it, and, and even then it's perhaps not possible to find it, but I thought ascending mm -hmm. and sent yeah. sort of alike. Yeah, and I played yeah. with that. So I came with the following translation. The pulpit glowed with pride since you to preach made on it your ascent. I wonder, did it hold the preacher or did the pulpit spread ascent? Mm -hmm. So yes. ascent, ascent okay. with A-S-C-E and then ascent in two different words. That's, I would say, a very close translation of the Arabic poem into English mm -hmm. without many liberties. So this is, I have lots of fun doing this. And of course you probably think it's very silly, but um, this, uh, yeah, this is one way that Arabs like to make puns. And 
the next one, yeah, we could do more. I have still more time. Hatian, can, can uh, we sort of play with this a little bit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm Marina, are we allowed to play with it a little bit? Um, so there is uh, what we what I see here, right, is member. So you have movement, up movement, mm -hmm. yeah. right, and that comes with um, and in sort of uh, conceptually, you play with someone who's arrogant, right? Um, takabara, right? Yeah. It's also in terms of expansion in size, right? So I mean, I'm I'm trying to think in terms of sound, not just smell. Or the rhythm, but also the visual and the the the, the, the smell and the sound aspect of it. Um, so so you, you have the size, and then you have movement of lines, mimbar ala, right? Mustarqaitu, mm -hmm. right? Again, you know, moving up, right? Up up one khatiba. So you know, can, can we sort of like play? And I'm I'm sort of like uh, opening out to our participants here, right? Um, and khatiba, khatiba, and if you play with the root, right? Um, it could be someone who is giving a sermon, um, uh, or right. Uh, it, 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 what can we, can we do with it, right? As a word, as meaning, right? And then dhamma. Uh, I can't see. It's very, the print is very small. Dhamma khatiba. Right? Again, we back to language. Uh, khatiba, uh, is, is it something that's dangerous, serious, or some anything like this, right? And dhamma, can we can we think about grammar as well, or can we think about movement, embrace, yeah. right? People embracing each other, or um, uh, a box, right? Thinking of the paradox between freedom and constraint in a box that constrains you, right? Minka am dummi khatiba, right? And here is the sound, right? And I think Manhal posted something uh, earlier. <laughs> right? So the same sounds, but different words. So, so uh, can, can we sort of play with this in English? And it doesn't have to be, the meaning doesn't have to be literal as long as we convey an aspect of it. So like Orhan, do you think you want to try and make it sort of like, uh, a, a sort of a, someone who is stuttering around, right? Waft, wafting in perfume or something like this. Mm -hmm. Or Manhal, where is Manhal? Uh, Khaled, anybody? Khaled has put a message with yeah. a comment. Um, Khaled, do you want to speak? Where are you? Malas, yeah, Khaled, where I'm are you? My, my connection is terrible, so I worry. Huh. So. Um, I, I, I thought that there was a second pun on in the second bit, which is it's something about containment and the wafting of the scent, yeah. mm -hmm. both of which are happening from the member. Uh, one imagines the voice of the or even the smell of yeah, perfume is, somehow filling the space. Came this, which is probably by coffee, I suppose. But I thought we can also, like, if we're not being grammatical, right? Yeah. Or, and Ajab, right? You know, they're, they're interchangeable, especially when we don't speak Arabic perfectly. So Ajab, right? This T, right? This arrogance, this, this some a man or a woman strutting around could be a, a sight of wonder, of marvel, right? Ajib or, or Gharib, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think it'd be fun to translate it into something mm -hmm. that takes us away from the literal meaning of Arabic. Yes, but if you can stay close to the literal meaning. That's even and better. Well, why not? Of course, I'm defending my own translation. But, uh, I, I, of course, I, I know that it's often done to 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 change, uh, say, medieval poetry into modern English poetry. That's not my way. I think it's not as if the modern, um, the, the, the ancient poem should be be brought to the modern reader. On the other hand, I think, in, by contrast, I think I would like to take the modern reader. To the Middle Ages, uh, the other way around, um, as much as possible, of course. And uh, of course, the end result is always a compromise. But uh, I mean, go ahead and try to make a different poem, which uh, may be more appealing to modern English tastes. Good, John. Hmm? Can you hear me? I had yeah, yeah. another version with an alternative pun. I'm, I'm probably clutching at straws, but I'll, I'll throw it into the mix. I do try. Okay, go for it, Phil. Which is, is something like this. 
The pulpit is swelling with pride since you began to preach. Is there a priest in the pulpit or is it a ripe peach? <laughs> That's very good. Uh, right, Peach, it sounds rather erotic to me, uh, as if it's going to be consumed, which is not, I think, uh, intended in there. For once, this is not an erotic uh, epigram, uh, although some of my, my examples are. But I, I, I think it's a very nice attempt. Yeah. But Domnicha is kind it sounds of... Arabic. Uh, it sounds medieval to me, yes. But Domnicha has a um, beautifying aspect to it. Mm -hmm. And then together with the pleep, I think it's more sensual. So the right peach, yeah, I think kind of nails it. Well, it is, it is very, very nice. Yes, yeah. Maybe, maybe. I kind of see some um, chiastic agreement in the um, composition of the poem, the Qadzah al Member or Ujban and Bumbi Khatiba versus Mutaraqayta Khatiba Atura Dhamma Khatiba. Uh, uh, as uh, Wen Chin mentioned, uh, the directionality, the movement, and also the containment, I think it would be nice to reflect this also in English. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, which I did with using the word ascent at least. Yeah. To ascend to. Uh, yeah. so, and the Dummi Khatiba is just otherworldly. Dummi <laughs> Khatiba, Dummi Khatiba. I mean, yeah. Can, can you even do that in English? <laughs> well, I, I think I did with ascent, ascent going up and no, ascent. No, I, meant the sound. I meant the sounding of it, uh, the uh, containing the uh, one, contain, well, there is this containment and then there is also the uh, containing of the dum in dum micha yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's, first line, the second line, the repetition of it. That's right. You can't, you can't do everything. You can't do yeah. like that, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, can, can we go back to the gazelle? The, um, one before, the one with the curl. Oh, yes. Just because it struck me that what you were saying about the, the, the letter, the C, yeah. and, and the conjugate, the, I, that actually one could perhaps do it with the J, which is a hook. Oh, if you could, yes. And, be then, and then you've got, you can do the possibility with um, your, you know, your, the, the, the curl of your, sorry, I, I haven't done it yet, but um, some, something to do with joining and, um, and then, or conjoining and then conjugate. You, you had the conjugate in there somewhere. That was in the other epigram about uh, the, 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 the conjugate, conjugation and declination. Mm -hmm. That was in the, the lament about his. Oh, yes, uh, okay. His yeah. wife. Anyway, I. I, I but you're right, this is also about conjugation or rather declination. It's about a genitive. And yes. So yes, the J would be very nice, but can you rhyme with J? I mean, I can think of the bird, J, which does not really <laughs> fit in. Um, but then it doesn't have, to, doesn't have to rhyme because the Arabic is only one line and doesn't rhyme. I mean, there are sort of erotic words, I suppose, that might I mean, there's play. I don't know if play would be considered a rhyme for J. Yeah. But, um, I'm sorry, it's very difficult without, um, it's difficult without something like Padlet with scribbling. I mean, if ah, we, yes. we could yeah. scribble online. Mm. Ellie, you were saying that your dictionary um, gives another a translation for the the one that we were just looking at the third one i think and um, sorry the the dumb the, 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 yeah um, right so ellie is here saying my hansver dictionary tells me that khataba can also mean to propose marriage could there be right. a translation which plays on this context of the altar pulpit oh yes mm. well that, that's nice, of course, yes. That's very nice, That's nice. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to, to sort of push uh, and to be a bit more radical about it, if we can go back to Bahrain, uh, what is it? Can you go back to that line? Yeah. And because today, um, the, your script, the, the script is very small. Oh, yeah, sure. And I can't see the vowels or the dots 
So I'm, I'm bringing this back to you and to the kind of um, word, word games, right? Like Al Ma'arri or, or others would play in mm -hmm. a sense, you know, they, they, they go for the visual, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of the visual, right? So Yajurru, can we think of it in terms of Bah? I'm, I'm, I can't see a thing right now, right? So you just look at the line, the letters, but without the dots or without the vowels. And then we reshape the entire poem, the, the entire line, reshape the sentence there, right? So Yajurru becomes Bahar or something else, whatever you like, mm -hmm. right? Uh, go with go with the sound of, of the line. Binun could be banun, right? Sons, right? A sud 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 right? Yeah. And then without uh, uh, without being able to see the sud sada, right? Uh, 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 a hit or a Splitting. strike or, yeah. or, or Cracking. trauma type of thing. What? Qalbi lil asa, qalbi, I can't think of anything. Wama khiltu anna nuna, right? Min ahrufi jarri. And of course, I'm saying this because jar, jarra, there is some, there's movement and it's a sudden, it, it's a violent one and a fast one, right? You drag mm -hmm. this, right? But again, asa, right? We associate in Arabic asa with water sea sea right as a metaphor right see tears and so on and so forth right so i'm just i'm just thinking right and uh, orhan can come in and help and phil can come in and help right how do we think about this a little bit differently knowing very well that it is about um and ellie is probably right right there's there's a lot of eroticisms in in here Right, but it is also about this paradox of uh, being in love. Right, it's yeah. exciting, but it's also painful and apprehensive, and so on and so forth. So I'm I'm just throwing this out so we can all think about it a little bit differently and think of different ways of saying it. And I'm sure, yeah, you know, like Phil will, will will come up with something very interesting right now. Yeah, Orhan, want to come in? Uh, Khaled, Hazad, anybody? You could obviously invert it because it's um, uh, it's it's got the imagery, the metaphorics of love poetry. You could potentially say, I, "I I never thought he could drag my heart into misery with a mere tear tear of a uh, tear of his." Uh, yeah. To invert the imagery, but stay within the um, genre of. Um, yes, but then the, the panning is lost. I think. I mean, you could. To try all kinds of cunning and of course when, she, when Chin is right that uh, uh, Yajur could be reread Bahar C which seems uh, to fit the word noon which apart from the letter N also means a fish but then you have a problem because Sodok can only be a lock of hair uh, so I think you should stay, talk, should stay through the original meaning what the poet tried to, to convey and um, yeah um, so I, I don't see any way of, of reading seas and tears in the poem, which are not there. I, mm -hmm. um, well, um, I don't know if there's time for more. Perhaps not. Perhaps yes, this, yes. Hmm? Yeah, let's do one more. Think about this and do one more. Which one? more, actually. Should, should we do slightly naughty the case of winter or should we do the uh, the the one uh, the acrostic at the end uh, whatever you like whatever um, you like it's yours it's your choice well, but then of course uh, the acrostic is four lines you could pop, i could i couldn't ask you to uh, to come up with something so but um, we have we have plenty of time oh. here john i think we've still got half an hour if we need it um yeah of course but uh, you, you may want to go on with your, your exercises too. Anyhow. No, um, I think we're just doing the translation. Um, let me see. Um, can, I, can I give you my attempt in, with the letter J? Okay, yeah. Like, yes. yeah. Your curls sink hooks into my heart like the letter J. If only, I, if only we could join, sorry, if only we could join, I could jo join with you and play. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. It, 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 um, 
And of course, there's a pond there. Yeah, yeah. It's not, of course, the J is not returning, except in the join. Yeah, yeah. Join with you in play. Can you say it again, Marina? Your curls sink hooks into my heart like the letter J. If only we could join. If only, yes, if only I could join with you and play. Something like that. that conveys the spirit of the line, yes. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's what I'm, yeah. I'm afraid because I can't read the Arabic. It's not so easy for me to do it properly. But, um, no, of course, there's a technical term, the word jar meaning uh, pulling, but also genitive, and that is difficult to convey in, uh, in English, of course. Um, well. Conjoin. Maybe conjoin would be better. Conjoin with you and play. Yeah. Well, that would work, yes. Conjoin. Um, Conjunction, yes. And conjugate. That's what. Yes, conjugate. Yes, that's what. Yeah. That's the point that I used in an earlier line. Yes. You, you lose the rhyme. Yeah, but the rhyme is not necessary when you have only one line in Arabic because uh, there is no rhyme there. So my rhyme was uh, superfluous, really. So Hartian, there yeah. is ma yatlubuhu jamahir. Uh, Khaled has re is requesting. Can we look at? The first one, the first yeah, okay. example. Okay, um, if I scroll, can you then? Yes, this is the one, yes. Yeah, stop. Right. Hmm. Um, so yes, that's uh, another one, uh, which is also uh, makes use of, of grammatical terms. By Ibn Tilmiz, in it, a rather minor 12th century poet, he was more famous as a, as a physician. قد قلت للشيخ الشيخ الجليل الأريحي أبي المظفر ذكر فلان الدين بي قال المؤنث لا يذكر. So yeah, that is uh, an intricate pun again. So yes, do try to give a, a literal translation. Literal. Oh, the one. I, I, I asked the uh, kind sheikh. Uh, um, remind, um, remind such and such um, of me, and he said, the, ma uh, the feminine cannot be uh, rendered masculine. Yes, that's literal meaning. But why is he saying that? <laughs> well, um, to negate uh, the verb, to remember, uh, to make, to remind somebody of, to remember. Yeah. Uh... And he uh, puts it in the passive, obviously. He asks him to be to remind somebody, and he is replying, cannot be uh, mentioned. Yeah. Um, the point is, this is a, a little invective poem or a lampoon on someone who is um, called a sheikh, a jali, a magnanimous sheikh, but according to the one who answers, this is uh, an effeminate person. Uh, like a muhannath, a muhannath, a muhannath, the effeminates are a well-known category in Arabic law, but also in Arabic society. Um, so um, he's playing with the, the word muhannath and muzakkar, which means literally uh, uh, effeminate and also masculine um, or male, but there's also grammatical terms to, to, mm. for uh, for male and for masculine and feminine. So, uh, how to translate this and trying to to uh, to get keep the pun? Well, um, it's difficult to do it politically in a politically correct way. I, I thought of the word zakke, which is to, to remind, which has to do with memory. Remember. Now, if you say remember, that reminds you of member. Yeah. And member has a certain meaning in English, which I don't have to specify, and. Uh, Apparently, they are not connected etymologically, but I use them in my translation, um, which is, I said to the venerable magnan magnanimous Sheikh Abu Muzaffar, remember me to so and so a dean. He replied, an effeminate will not use a member. And uh, because an effeminate is not, uh, will not have sexual intercourse with um, perhaps, uh, well, and this, that's what I read in it. Uh, because Zakar means penis. Uh, so it's a, it's a slightly bawdy pun. Uh, 
with playing with the root zakara in Arabic, which has to do with memory, remembrance, zikra, zik, to also to mention, uh, re, to remind someone. Uh, zakar means remind me of a uh, uh, greeting for me, uh, remind me of Fulan the Dean, so and so. And then the answer is, oh no, he is uh, an effeminate, no member for him, or something like that. Uh, I don't know if you, you like this kind of playing, but that's what they, they did all the time. Um, it's uh, again a, a grammatical pun or a pun that uses grammatical terminology. And um, that's, of course, a very common way of punning. It's, it was done in, in medieval Europe too. I mean, I remember this wonderful book by Hans Robert Courtius uh, about European. Uh, was it uh, in, uh, what is the, um, the title? Uh, European Literature in the Middle Ages or something like that, in the Latin Middle Ages. And there is even an excursus, an excursus on the, the punning use of grammatical terms in Latin, medieval Latin. And the Arabs did it all the time. So, uh, I mean, you yeah. could also think of um, refreshing or topping up somebody's memory, and then you could go to the top bottom. Ali. Oh, yes, that's, <laughs> yeah, you could use that uh, idiom as well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is a set of uh, 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 very naughty lines, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So you start out pretending to be sort of totally respectable, right? And you, you, you're getting respect to someone, as sheikh al-jadil al-aryahi. Abi Mudaffa, right? Yeah, that's right. a very lofty. Yeah, yeah. Victories or, or, or win, win, winnings and so on and so forth, right? But it's also, and then it comes down, that that fulan ad dini right? Uh, sort of, uh, uh, Jamal ad din Az ad din whatever, fulan ad din right? So there is the beginning of irreverence here. Yeah. B, use me, remind him right yeah. remind this person of me yeah. and remind this person of faith and religion right and then this one turns it completely around right and this one is this is problematic one and this is what Burhan means by politically incorrect yeah. a woman a feminine cannot be made into a masculine right yeah. a faithless cannot be made into faithful and so on and so forth but but this is the the, 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 the naughty part of it, right? Yes. Uh, so how, how do you, um, and, and I, I think sort of like the term use member is is very interesting, um, but, but, but how do you convey this, this complete reversal, right? Of the tone, right? From respect to, um, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's why I use remember me too. And then member, yeah. which of course is clearly uh, in, Sense of memorum viri, viri uh, and, uh, and the, so that's the uh, connection that I used. Um, but I mean, normally it's impossible to, to 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 translate these puns, but I came up with this one, and I thought it would be a nice exercise for the workshop. But um, and it certainly shows you what um, kind of wordplay there is in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And yes, that it's politically incorrect. That's uh, that's very clear in many cases. Yeah. Maybe one can also play on the um, memorable and immemorable thing to come off the uh, the sexual connotation of the poem. Well, actually, yeah. um, it, it would be quite offensive to say anything like that these days. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Girtian, can you tell us in what kind of circles these kinds of puns would have circulated i mean who who, who where, would they have been performed orally or only circulated in in uh, writing um that's a good point i think they when people sat together uh, they probably would uh, perhaps even improvise or exchange these things in company but i'm sure that many were actually uh, written down and this this one i got from uh, this famous dictionary of uh, of encyclopedia of of physicians that uh, came out in five volumes a few months ago and uh, I participated in I translated all the poetry so this is actually in a biography of a, of, of a physician in 12th century Baghdad and uh, he is more famous at least in his book his, his epigrams are given far more attention than his physical knowledge or his books or whatever and uh, it's pages and pages of this kind of epigrams I think they, they really enjoy them and they send them around between the people who 
well, who uh, mastered this art of composing epigrams. Of course, it's in classical Arabic, which is not the spoken language. So it is it's an elite, of course. But um, many people are literate, and anyone who was literate was supposed to make some poetry. And uh, there are thousands of these epigrams, and some, uh, quite a number of them are naughty, yes, I'm afraid. Eddie has done a version. Eddie, why don't you read oh. it? Oh, ah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't, I wanted to um, leave it there, not to change the subject, but um, yeah, when, when we were talking, I wondered if the punctuation might be a good English substitute. So I wrote oh. a version of the, um, yeah, of the previous wordplay, which was the tangled ampersand of your hair stirs my heart. I didn't know I could feel so joined to a uh, strand. Uh, I like ampersand. That's very good. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I just wondered if it might with the. I one. I thought I might be able to do more direct wordplay with like strand and and. I don't know if there's more yeah. potential with that, um, but as a starting place. Yeah, I, I like ampersand. Also has to do with joining and. Uh, mm. yeah, yes, it's very good. That's it. It's just what I was hoping to get a kind of an English pun replacing uh, a standing for an Arabic pun. Yeah, very good. <laughs> and it's so contemporary and localized as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, yes. Thank you. Very good. Um, the curl of the punctuation. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's certainly good. Um, well, I don't know if we have more time. Uh, the, the case of winter, <laughs> does anyone, that's, uh, a very famous line, which is also in the Hariri Makamat, by the way. I um, don't know if anyone can see them. By 10th century poets. Mm. Um, yeah, it's slightly naughty because it's got a four-letter word, which is two letters in Arabic only. Um, but uh, you see, this is alliteration. Um, so literally, it means uh, something like uh, the, the winter has come. And uh, I have seven things, but I have seven things that, uh, that I need uh, when I have to close business because of the dripping rain. And then he has these seven things that start with K, all necessary to him in the winter. And now, is that, is that possible to, to translate? I came up with the version using the K sound, not the letter K, but the letter C or K pronounced as K. And of course, that's what it amounts to, it's alliteration, of course. Um, I don't know if anyone dares to, of course. <laughs> it's always <laughs> risky to, uh, to ask. So I want to translate a slightly risque line. If you could give us the, the literal translation. Yeah, uh, ken, kenun is something that shelters and that covers you. It could be a nest or a house or whatever. Keys is, is a bag or um, um, uh, a bag of money, perhaps a purse, it could be. Kanun is, is, is an oven or a, or a stove rather, a heat place for heating. Stila is a, a cup of wine or a glass of wine. And bad kebab is after kebab, <laughs> meat. And kus, I'm afraid, is a, is a two-letter word for an English-letter word. It just means cunt, I'm, I'm afraid. It's still very common in colloquial Arabic. And a nice kus and kisab, which means clothes, clothes. So I have already uh, a few k's in English, like clothes, and uh, the previous word. <laughs> so I had to keep, to keep the k's in, Arabic, in, in English too. Actually, this this is a very good point, but place for Phil to come in because this is rather Olympian, isn't it? If you, every word has to begin with a k sound. Thank you, Lorena. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 yes, it's it's um, yeah, certainly Ulipo do things using um, using this sort of thing. I think homo consonantism um, but certainly things where every every word begins with the same consonant mm. is one of the is one of the constraints i forget the name the name of it and it's <laughs> it's it's and it's a little bit like things like alliteration that you get in 
What's that? Early English poetry. There is poems, poems, there is a famous poem in English, which you also, you also mentioned, I think, uh, in, in, in your book, um, in the 19th century, uh, in where every line, the first line starts word to word, speaking with A, then B, and off, an Austrian army off, uh, offered arranged boldly by battle besieged Belgrade. And I mean, uh, there's yes. a famous poem that goes on, including all the letters of the alphabet. Uh, I don't think Arabs did that, but certainly we have this uh, alliteration in one line at least. Mm. Um, well, I could read my translation. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Winter has come, but I have seven things I need when due to dripping rain our business we must close. A cosy cover, cash, a kindled stove, a cup of claret and kebab, a lovely cunt and clothes. <laughs> Deep rhymes of sort. Very and, good, uh, yes. Very good. Because I think Phil has some exercises he wanted to suggest to us. I think, D didn't you? I, I mean, I'm quite happy. I think we were... One of the reasons I asked people to try an Olympian haiku when we were talking was that I, I thought the the focus was on translation, and this might be the mo more, in more interesting way to spend this hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can I can I have some things up my sleeve if you want to do something else. Yeah. One of which would involve practice on on homophones and punning, which would only take five minutes. Oh, um, but if we want to try some more Arabic translation. Well, I thought we could segue into you, you give us something, but why don't we have a go yeah. at doing what, just thinking about what we want went from winter, what we need in winter. Yeah. Just, what, just take our cue from this poem, but not necessarily keeping to the curse sound. No, no, okay. So we, could, we could just try and do it. So we need seven things to get through the winter, and we could try and make it in some responsive way to this to this poem. Yeah. Is that all right, Girjan? Yes, fine. Yes, yeah. good idea. Yeah. No, but uh, I, I've given mine, my, or rather, given Sukkara's uh, seven things. No, no, yours, but, is, yours is excellent. Yeah. Just that it's an, it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting chain of associations. Because um, winter could be figurative too, couldn't it? It could be a kind of desert of the, desert of the heart. Um, yeah, well, I think he's speaking about a literal winter. Yes, uh, yes, he is, yes. But I'm sorry, be... what are the formal criteria for the um, poem about seven things that will get us through winter? Hmm? Do you want us to um, keep to the rhyme scheme? Or not the rhyme scheme? Oh, no, no. Or consonantism or assonance or... I think consonantism, you could choose a consonant. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the curse sound. No. Um, and anything, any constraints regarding the syllable count? Seven. What do you think, Phil? The syllable count where? For the poem that we uh, should work on. Any formal criteria? I mean, if we're just improvising out of it, I would just think come up with a list that mm. okay. all begins with the same letter. Mm. And don't worry too much about the syllables. But that, oh. would, that would be my instinct. Yes. But, but we're departing then from translating, of course. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just a quick reminder, also shita in Arabic can mean rain, right? And it, it yeah. is here, yeah. it's rain, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, in Lebanese. Rain. Has anyone written one? Oh, look, there's Philip, Wi-Fi, Woolens, Wellingtons, Wine, Water, Wit, Women. Oh, yes, that's a good one, yes. <laughs> that's very, very good, yes. That's a, yes. Uh, yeah, very good, yeah. yeah. I got to six, but not, I couldn't get to seventh, because I don't eat meat, so I didn't want to say beef. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could say beef, but um, so I, I had bed, bread, Brandy, brandlings, blankets, Bollinger, and books. beef. <laughs> books. And books, yes, books. But they're not particularly wintry, are they? No, that's true. But I need, you, need, you need books uh, to, to read. Bollinger is. Can't go out. Yeah. Ooh, so someone else got one. So maybe we do go to, go to Phil's now. Yeah. Oh, look, there. Yes. Phil may have something. Eileen, is it? 
Chelka Silver Stove Champagne, something simmering singer. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, Lovely. That's nice, yes. Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the sound. Well, now, now, now do this for every letter of the alphabet. <laughs> yes, yes. Pickles, peppermints, papers, pitter patter, people, pearls, pajamas. Actually, you read it, Ellie. You read it. Go ahead. <laughs> Pickles, peppermints, papers, pitter patter, people, pearls, pajamas. Very good. Yeah, I like it. Yes. Very, very good. Lovely. Oh, here's Orhan. Give us yours, Orhan. Light lions, liberties, love lumps, lust luxuries. <laughs> lumps of what? <laughs> lumps of sugar. <laughs> very good. All right. Phil, give us one or two, just very quickly. Okay, well, one, if I can find it. I wasn't planning this, but it'll fit well if I can find it. Should be with the uh, Roubaix, actually. Um, Pocket Kennet. No, one of these. Um, so this is, um, well, this is really an exercise in creating sort of um, homophonic puns. So some of this translation has involved finding impossible puns. So, and this is an exercise in punning. So it could be good training for doing the kind of translation that uh, here Jan is talking about. And it'll only take us a few minutes and it should be fun. So these, these are my, these, these aren't, this is a form invented by chap who used to be the, of course, Ulipo being French have a, have a president, president. And uh, for many years, the president was a man called Paul Fournel, who's still alive and well. And um, he invented this funny form he called the Chicago, partly because it, it finishes with a punning line. It's a bit like a riddle. And rather than explain it, if I read you the first one, you'll see how it, how it operates. The first, it's called a Chicago because the first one he invented, the, the pun was on the word um, Chicago in, in French. Anyway, the pun, the, these ones, you've got four lines and the fifth line isn't given, but the fifth line is the kind of solution to the riddle, if you like. And the four previous lines are um, hinting at the solution. Um, I can't possibly explain it, but I'll read it and see if you can guess it and then you will understand what I'm talking well, it's about. It's actually part of the, um, so the of Middle Eastern poetries. Well, sorry? Uh, there is a riddles in Middle Eastern poetry, also in Arabic. Yeah, and yeah. Riddle, that, riddles, that in Old English, riddles in Old English poetry is, as well. Um, but this one, the, the answer is a bird. And the first four lines hint at what the bird might be. It's a bird that has been, it's a bird that you could have heard singing recently. In fact, I had the extraordinary experience of hearing one of these singing in my garden about seven days ago sang for three nights and then stopped. It's famous for its song. Dawn, I think, yes, I see, I see it. Dawn, I see. In, dawn in mist, morning in sunshine, afternoon in cloud, evening in rain. Night in... Yeah. And then yeah. night, night in gale, N-I-G-H-T-I-N-G-L-E, and which obviously is, <clears throat> sounds the same as nightingale, the bird. So that so the homophonic thing, the punning thing is night in gale and nightingale yeah so your final line has to be a pun um okay and the second one is we'll do i'll show you the second one just to Let's illustrate see. it again th this does a similar thing I've with another well-known bird prince hunter, princess catcher duke shooter queen trapper king fisher king fisher and then that gives you the bird king fisher by just squeezing the two words together so i was wondering if you could come up with one of these when Paul Fournel originally did them, he didn't use birds. He used he used the names of cities, hence hence Chicago. Chicago turns into into she cago, which in French is is shit hypocrite loosely. Um, <laughs> Chicago, but Chicago because um, the French don't say Chicago; they call it Chicago, of course. Um, so if you could think of one for a for a city or a place or, well, anything you like, you could use anything, but my suggestion is you try it for a place. So you, you could take, you know, you could take uh, Manchester and turn it into mm. man, 
chest and hair, for example, or or anything else. So see if you can do one of these with a place. So you, you, begin, you begin with a pun on a place and then you think of four other lines which hint at that. Sorry, I can't be clearer on this, but I hope you get the idea. So Marina's, Marina's one is very clever. Heart Lake gives, gives us, I think, liver, liver pool. And one, oh, yeah. one, one could expand that, I suppose, with other, other bodily organs, so. Um, I, I, I tried to send one, but I couldn't, but I can read lung, it. Heart Lake, Lung, Tarn, Liverpool, and so on. You could, could expand it if you wanted to. Of course, Paul Fornell gives us four lines. You, you could just have one line like Marina has, or you could have a hundred lines, of course. There's no restriction on the length. Here, Jan, you had something? Well, I can read it. Uh, South died. West aged or aged, north grown. It's an English town. Can we have it again? South died. West aged. North grown or grown up. E east born. East born. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's reversed from yeah, died I, to born. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very yes, good. No, that's, yeah. that's very good. It would be easier if we saw it, I think. Yeah, I tried to type it. I see the pattern. Yeah. No, that's really nice and totally gets the idea, actually. The, the, the Ulipo ones often use that kind of progressive. That's what you do, yeah. Sarah has one. Sarah. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Sarah? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't do the unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Peter Flute, Mary Glass, Tommy Tumbler, Susan Schooner. So they're all names of drinking vessels and people. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the solution is going to have the same pattern mm -hmm. and be a place. I can see the pattern, but I can't see the solution yet. Think uh, Harold Pinter. Oh, <laughs> Pinter, Pinter. Um, Tanker. Uh, isn't it Pinter where the um, the man has this Dunbury. holiday place he dreams of all the time? What is it? <laughs> Shall I say it? It's Sid Cup. Sid Cup. It would have yeah. taken me years to get that. <laughs> very, very good. But very good. Um, and then we've got from Orhan, we have come and see Professor Lee, River Key. I can't this, see the progression. This is enigmatic to me, um, but I think there's a rhyme going on. Come and see Professor Lee, River Key. Orkney doesn't rhymes, but is otherwise close. I mean, closer than where you are. Okay. Um, Better tell us, I think. Dundee. Dundee. Very good. Come and see Professor Lee, River Key, Dundee. Yes, that works. So I think we're, we, we've, um, well, I had a little go at that, which is, is, is fits exactly with what we were doing in, in terms of it's, um, it's really, really playing with puns and learning, learning, learning how to pun. Um, it does seem to me that the, um, the um, I mean, as, as, as with, you know, dirty jokes in English always involve puns. And that does one of the things Ulipo do. Some, and some of the some of the ones we heard from the the Arabic have that kind of so-called body <laughs> angle angle. And I think, but, and I think and I think one of the things that have one of the Ulipo things is what they call a monovocalism. So you just use um, you write something and just use one vowel. 
and quite a lot of kind of spoken word poets in English have used this. Mm -hmm. And when you do, whoever does the one with you ends up with a string of expletives. It has the F word in it, but also has loads of those other words in it. Yeah. Some of which, uh, um, um, here, Jan mentioned, but all the all the rude words in English are the words with um, just the 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 vowel U in it. So so when people do a monovocalism in U, and of course stand up poets who do this kind of thing yes. revel in that and and exploit it to to the full, I wouldn't personally be comfortable doing that at all. But it's one of the things I've noticed happening with certain kinds of ulipo thing that actually you end up you end up with a kind of thing full of expletives and, and body parts and things, which can, which can be quite unsettling. Let, let, let's leave it there, but it's, I think that's an interesting phenomenon that the, the, the pun often takes one in that, in that direction or can do. I mean, I think the sort of the whole ingenuity of it is often connected to these pleasures. I mean, the pleasures of the irreverent, mm. The pleasures of blasphemy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, isn't it? That's yeah. Yeah. Yes, and there's a sort of power of transgression and, yes. and transgression in that, which which is 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 all part of this. But I think anyway, hopefully that was um it was it was lovely to look at some of those punning Arabic texts and try and translate them and and real eye opener for for me as someone who's doesn't know Arabic uh, at all except in some things in translation. And I hope that little exercise would seem to fit with what we were doing. We've, we've gone a little over, but we could round up now, could we, Marina? Absolutely, yes. But we, we should thank you. If you could all unmute, we can perhaps give you some applause. Well, it was a great pleasure. Thanks to everyone who was here, really. I feel thank like a so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you. <laughs> great fun.